And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me, as always, is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, we have witnessed Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. But seriously, honestly, if this were a house of love, this would be the point where I would say that I can't put this one into my house of love. (laughs) Doesn't that part normally come at the end? Well, yeah, but it's certainly technically competent. Well, yeah, Yeah. I I got the feeling uh, you liked it, but yeah, I guess not. Oh, well, I didn't hate hate it. Because, at least in the end, she made out like a bandit. Well, that is to say that, you know, there was a happy ending. So, I mean, what I thought was, it was pretty terrible. I and mean, then, like you say, it was technically competent. There were no faults with the cinematography or whatever, I suppose. But all the characters were miscast. The police woman was much too old. I don't know why she, she was so old. Rene Montoya, as a character, is often drawn much younger in the comics. Yeah, I suppose so. But then again, being that she becomes the question later on, whether or not this Rene Montoya will actually inherit the question mantle, Probably is still open not. to interpretation. Probably not. I did like, though, how Helena Bertinelli's Huntress was rather socially awkward. Yeah, no, I thought that was just kind of annoying. It just made it kind of annoying, and Black Canary was just, I don't know, I suppose she was okay-ish, but like she didn't really do anything. Black Mask was wrong, Zaz was wrong. Okay, oh, I can agree with you on that one. Zaz was definitely, in the comics, he's very much a thin guy, and he's all the time shirtless. And jittery. Jittery. This one wasn't jittery. Yeah. Wait. Was he jittery in the games, like the Arkham Batman games? Yeah, he was pretty much, yeah. yeah. Never bothered with Arkham Knight. No. No. Wasn't that good unless you liked driving around in the Batmobile constantly. I didn't find any of the characters particularly likeable, which made it hard to root for anybody too. Yeah, that, that was a main failing of the movie. I think There the was a serious kind of... debt of likeability. Yeah. Outside of Quinn herself. She was the baddie. She was kind of a baddie, I suppose. Villain protagonist, that's what they call it. Yeah. Bruce was the best character, and he was a hyena. Eh, yeah. I think he was a CGI hyena as well. I mean, were we this hard on Deadpool? Um, no, because Deadpool was, like, funny all the way through. It was just hysterical. It was. And made on a small budget. It was. Plus, which, what, what kind of Gotham City is this supposed to be, anyway? Um, I mean, they make a lot of films now, like, they made The Joker, which admittedly I haven't seen, and Batman wasn't in it. And now, this one, Batman wasn't in it either. And let's face it, Batman would have been all over that. Yeah, but then you'd just have ended up with another Batman movie. Yeah. And as enjoyable as that may be, let's well, face it, this is what this is the movie that Margot Robbie wrote because Jared Leto took his method acting a little too far. So if you really don't like it, you can actually blame it on Jared Leto for taking method acting to an obnoxious level and making his co-star actually want to write a film where she's not under his thumb anymore. Which is a thing. I suppose. Just... Really, he was terrible in that film anyway. Suicide Squad. Yeah, that was it. Can't even remember. It was so bad. It wasn't great. Well, it was okay. It was pretty good. I seem to remember I put that one into the House of Love. Yeah. Too dark. I got confused about what was happening, and there was just like the trope of the big laser beam into the sky thing. But again, that's a completely different film. Oh, you're talking about Suicide Squad, yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah, we've all, I've already done A House of Love on it, so... Yeah. This one just seemed to not have a lot of plot, you know? Just... She broke up with her boyfriend, 
and then there was some diamond. Some kid swallowed a diamond. And I mean, you know, they called it Birds of Prey, but they weren't even in it really until sort of the last half an hour or so. The last, yeah, big final fight scene. Yeah. And even the confrontation wasn't that great. No. I mean, it was kind of lacking something, wasn't it? It was all lacking something, really. I think... It was just kind of the unbelievability of it, I suppose. Well, knowing what we know about Gotham City and how the Batman operates. Yeah. But then, in a post-Justice League movie DC extended universe, do we even know that Batman still has his eye on the ball in that regard? Who knows? It could be the case that Batman is busying himself with the matters of the fledgling Justice League. Maybe. I mean, we don't even know what Superman's up to right now. No. Hopefully, uh, evening out his face so he doesn't have that terrible CGI-less moustache anymore. Well, you know Henry Cavill's been in The Witcher TV yeah. show, so of course he shaved that off. Yeah, he was there catching coins, because what you must do is toss a coin to your Witcher. As the song goes. Yes. Which I've actually heard, and is pretty okay. But, yeah, I think we can... I think this is going to be a pretty short one. And we can probably wrap it up right now by saying that if you like heist thrillers or... It wasn't even really a heist thriller, was it? I mean, there weren't many stakes or anything. Well, there was stakes. There was a, a life of all these people that Black Mask was threatening. And half the city was after Harley Quinn. Yeah, but it turned out to be just a couple of mercenaries, really. It was very low-key. It was kind of something you'd expect to be sort of like a TV episode or a TV well, movie or something. you can't keep raising the stakes in cinema in a universe. No, I know, but they could have done something a bit more than they did, I think. Yeah, maybe. If they'd gone too far, they would have had to have had more heroes in it. Yeah, well... Anyway, I would give this film a five, and I think I'm being charitable. Because, uh, I mean, none of the acting was terrible, but it didn't really stand out. And most of it was well put together, but there was no plot, and the action was a bit unbelievable, and it just wasn't very good. Uh, uneven script, heavy on the action... But it's good for Harley Quinn that she's living a better life. But yeah, I'm going to go with my nameless producer here and give this one a 5 out of 10. Well anyway, for my nameless producer, I've been Funky Monkey. E-begging links are below, thanks for listening, and I'll see you at the movies.